Hello Robloxians. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the image rect offset and image rect size properties of an image label to make an animation like this. I'm not much of an artist, so to get the images to use in the animation, I use a site called preloaders.net. This site allows you to customize an animation based on some predefined templates. You can see that there are many templates to choose from. I'm going to come over here to the circular category and see what options are available. This one looks nice. No wait! This one looks like the Aperture Science logo from Portal. I'll use that one instead. So after selecting the icon to use, it's time to customize it. Select a PNG here. That's an animated PNG file which looks much nicer than a GIF. I want the background to be transparent and here is where I set the color of the icon. I could choose a nice pretty color but in this case I want the icon to be white. Next I set the size of the icon. I'm going to choose 32 pixels square because Roblox decals are 256 pixels square and this will allow me to fit exactly 8 animation frames per row. We'll talk more about that later. Now we click generate preloader. We want to download the image as sprites rather than as an actual animated PNG and click download to save it. Open the image you downloaded in your favorite image editing software. I use an old version of PaintShop Pro. You can see that our image consists of 32 frames with each frame being 32 pixels square. We're going to use a Roblox decal to store these frames and a decal is 256 pixels square. So we need to format the image differently than what we than what the preloader website gave us. I'm going to create a new image of 256 pixels square. This is the decal that I'm going to upload. I'm just going to change the grid options to 32 pixels square. That's not really part of my image, but it gives me a nice grid layout to visualize where to place things. Each of those squares represents a frame of my animation. So I'm going to copy the image from the original PNG and paste it into my decal. Now I want to be very precise when placing the original image into the new image so that the animation will remain smooth and won't jump around or look jittery. Now I paste it in again and this time I arrange it on the second row of frames so that frames 9 through 16 are visible. The first row holds frames 1 through 8. Okay, that looks good. Row 3 will contain frames 17 through 24. And row 4 will contain frames 25 through 32. I want to make sure that everything is just right. Okay, now we've got all the animation frames laid out in a 256 pixel square image to be used as our sprite sheet. Now I save it and next I'll upload it to Roblox. Next we simply upload the image as a decal to Roblox. My screen recorder wasn't running when I originally uploaded this, so I'll show it to you again after the fact, but you should be familiar with this process already. Just go to your inventory page and click Decals, click Create, browse for the newly formatted image you made, and click the 
upload button here. Your image will show up here at the top of this list. Click on it to open it and of course it has to pass moderation before we can see it. We're going to need the image ID in our next step. As you probably know, when we use a decal in Roblox, we don't want the ID of the decal itself, but of the image that gets created at the same time that we uploaded the decal. Generally, the ID of the image we want is one lower than the ID of the decal. So we subtract one from this number, and in this case, I got sniped by Division Neutral here. Hi, Division Neutral. Welcome to my video. So I'll subtract one again, and this time, yep, yeah, here we go. The image you want will have the same name as the decal you uploaded, but it will say Roblox image here instead of Roblox decal. This is the ID that we need, so I'm going to copy that to the clipboard so that I have it a bit later when I need it in Roblox Studio. Here we are in Roblox Studio, and we're getting down to brass tacks now. First, we need to add a screen GUI to the starter GUI. And we'll call that animation GUI. Then we add a frame to the animation GUI and we'll call it animation frame. I want this frame to display in the center of the screen, so I change the position property. There we go. And I, since the animation is white, we don't want the background to be white. We'll choose a different color. Let's change, ooh, Aperture Science Test Subject Orange. That's pretty. Looking pretty good. Let's change the frame color to white. And now we're ready to insert the image label that we're going to animate. My animation frames are 32 pixels square. So I want to change this image label to match the size of my animation frames. And now I'll center the image in the frame. Perfect. Now we're going to set the image property. HTTP colon slash slash www.roblox.com slash asset slash question mark ID equals. And here's where we need that asset ID that we got from the Roblox website for our image. Control V to paste that in. And that's our image all scrunched up inside that image label barely visible so what we need to do is set the image rect size property this is a vector 2 value and it represents the size of our animation frames which were 32 pixels square now our first frame is displayed much more clearly within the image label to understand image rect size and image rect offset let's look at our formatted decal again Notice how the image is broken into rows and columns. Each cell in that grid is a frame of our animation. Image rect size is how much of our decal we want displayed at any given time. It's the size of our animation frame. In our case, it's 32 pixels by 32 pixels. That's simple enough. We need a way to tell the image label which cell to display. We're going to show each cell for a fraction of a second and loop through all the frames. This is what provides the appearance of motion in our animation. Image rect offset then is a coordinate within our decal or sprite sheet that tells the image label which cell to display. We use this property to tell the image label the coordinate of the top left pixel 
or the top left position of the cell we want to display. Pixels start counting from zero. So to display the first frame, we set the image rect offset to zero, zero. To display the second frame, which is 32 pixels further to the right, we add the frame width, 32 pixels, to the x-coordinate, and we get the coordinate 32, 0. To display the third frame, we add 32 pixels to the x-coordinate again, and we get 64, 0. Do you see the pattern? Fun, right? Here comes my favorite part, writing the code to animate the icon. We'll add a local script to the image label. Then we'll add variables to tell us the width and the height of our animation frame. These are both 32, but for a different image, they may not be the same value, say, if your image was taller than it was wide. So we need a variable to tell us which column contains the frame we want to display. We'll call that variable x-index. We need a similar variable to tell us which row contains the frame we want to display. Call that one y-index. These both start at zero. We'll make an infinite loop. But first, we'll need to access the image label, so we'll create a variable to store it at the very top. Label equals script.parent. Now, inside our loop, we're going to iterate over our frames. We do that by modifying the image rect offset property of the image label. It's a vector2 value, which is a data type containing an x and a y coordinate. We'll set it to the x index or the current column multiplied by the frame width and the current row multiplied by the frame height. Now we're showing the first frame. The next frame to show is in the next column over. So we add one to the x index, which represents the current column. At some point, we'll be too far to the right and need to start back over at zero. So we'll add another variable called max x, which represents the number of columns, which is eight, and a variable called max y, which is the number of rows, that's four. Now we'll perform some logic to see if our x index is too big. We don't want to tell the image label to display a frame outside the boundaries of our decal. So if x index, which we just added 1 to, equals our column count, then we're going to reset x index to 0. In that case, we also need to increase our y-index, which is the row containing the frame we want to display. We need to ensure y-index stays in bounds too, so if y-index is max y, we'll reset it to zero. Now all that's left is to add a small weight between frames. We'll wait for 8 hundredths of a second. We press F6 to run in solo mode. And there's our animation, spinning around like a boss, looking great. You really aren't getting tired of that, are you? Nah, GLaDOS. I could watch that all day. <laughs>